Hi friends, we're reading Dory Phantasmagory by Abby Hanlon. She's got imagination. She's funny. She's brave. She's a dog. No, she's a girl. She's Dory. What a rascal. Dory Phantasmagory by Abby Hanlon. Phantasmagory, a dreamlike state where real life and imagination are blurred together. Chapter One, Such a Baby. My name is Dory, but everyone calls me Rascal. This is my family. I am the little kid. My sister's name is Violet and my brother's name is Luke. Violet is the oldest. Violet and Luke never want to play with me. They say I'm a baby. Mom, Rascal is bothering us. What is she doing? Calls my mother. She's looking at us. She's breathing. All summer long, whenever I try to play with Luke and Violet, they say, please leave us alone. Well, I'm not going to leave, but I can't think of what to say. So I ask questions, any question I can think of. What does please mean? Why do we have armpits? How do they make plastic? I can't wait for school to start so we can get a break from Rascal, says Violet. Me too, grumbles Luke. Don't talk about school. I cover my ears. I never want summer to end. I like to stay home in my nightgown instead of getting dressed for school. It's a winter nightgown, says Violet. And it's inside out, says Luke. And it's backwards, says Violet. So what? I say. So now that you turned six, you need to stop acting like such a baby. Why do you always call me a baby? I complain. Because you talk to yourself, says Violet. And you have temper tantrums, says Luke. And you play with monsters, says Violet talk to myself? I have no idea what they're talking about. I never talk to myself. I talk to my friend Mary. No one can see her except me. Mary, it's lunchtime. Mary always wants to play with me. She thinks I'm the greatest. At night, Mary sleeps under my bed. Why do we have armpits? What an interesting question. During the day, Mary follows me around. She wants to do whatever I'm doing. I usually don't mind. Sometimes I have to tell her no. What is the opposite of a sandwich? I've always wondered that. Sorry, Mary, I'm playing with Violet. No, you aren't. Okay, Mary, what do you want to play? I ask. Here are some things Mary likes to do. Try and steal Violet's doll, Cherry. Fake sleep. Sneak cookies from the high cabinet. Exercise club. Get dragged around the house in a laundry basket. Why are you talking to a laundry basket? Faster? Look for monsters. The toilet monster, the ketchup monster, the vacuum monster, the living room monster, the broken drawer monster. Mary is my favorite, but my house is actually full of monsters. There is the toilet monster who comes into the bathroom if you sit on the toilet for too long. 
There's the ketchup monster who makes weird noises when you squeeze the ketchup. There is also the laundry monster, the broken drawer monster, the vacuum monster, the upstairs hallway monster, the living room monster, and more. The laundry monster. Upstairs hallway monster. I try to warn Luke and Violet when I see one. Watch out! It's behind you! Ah! There's a monster in your underwear! Run! The vacuum monster is coming! But Luke and Violet don't appreciate it. Rascal is driving me crazy! Yeah, me too. What are we going to do? Let's scare her back. I'll think of something. Think of something that will get her to stop acting like such a baby. Hmm. I've got an idea. After dinner, Violet and Luke say they have something important to tell me. I follow them upstairs, skipping steps. I'm so excited. What can it be? Violet lets me sit on her bed. Maybe she will let me play with Cherry. Very slowly, Violet asks me, Rascal, have you ever heard of someone named Mrs. Gobblegrecker? I shake my head no. Well, Mrs. Gobblegrecker is a robber and she steals baby girls, says Violet. And she is 507 years old and has very sharp teeth, adds Luke. And well, says Violet, you're going to be really surprised when I tell you this. What? I say, I'm dying to know. She's been looking for you, she says quickly. Are you serious? I ask. Dead serious, she says. Mrs. Gobblegrecker is looking for me? I ask in amazement. Shh, says Luke. She's so scary, you have to whisper when you say her name like this. Mrs. Gobblegrecker. So if I were you, I would stop acting like such a baby so she doesn't come to get you, says Violet. For a moment, I'm quiet. This is a lot to think about. Luke and Violet stare at me as if they are waiting for me to cry. How will she get in the house? Does she come in the front door? Will she ring the doorbell? I ask them. Before they answer, I have some more questions. Is she sneaky? Will I have to battle her? Does she wear a long black cape? Is it made out of fur? Is it real fur or fake fur? Are her teeth rotting? Does she brush them? Does she have a really creepy looking nose? Does she have a cat? Does she live in a cave? Does she have really long bones? We don't know! Leave us alone! They shout, shaking their heads and walking away fast. I follow Luke and Violet around the house. Oh my gosh! What have we done? Says Luke, covering his ears. This is the worst idea we have ever had, says Violet, trying to get away from me. Ever, says Luke, ever, ever, ever. I don't even want to know what happens next, says Violet. Is she a vegetarian? Does she vote? Is she nocturnal? Does she like ice cream? Does she like anything? Is she powerful? Does she have a cell phone? Does she eat rubber chickens? Chapter two, did you hear the doorbell ring? The next morning, I warn Mary. Mrs. Gobblegracker is 507 years old and she has black teeth that are sharp like needles and her pockets are all full of dirty tissues. And she could be on her way over here right now. So don't act like a baby. I've never seen a monster so scared. 
too tight. When I hear the doorbell, I run downstairs. Did you hear the doorbell ring? Nope, I didn't hear anything. Okay, I'll get it, I say. I run and hide under my parents' bed. There's something warm and furry under the bed. Someone is already hiding under this bed. It's Mary. Go fish. Ah, she's here! I'll jump out and scare her when she least expects it. Have you seen my cape? I whisper. Mary reaches behind her and hands me my cape, all wrinkled up in a ball. She always takes my things and doesn't return them. I'm going to battle, I tell her as I put on my cape. Can I help? Nope, too dangerous. Then, as fast as I can, I run into Luke's room to look for his darts. But when I hear footsteps coming closer, I dive into his closet to hide. It's dark and warm and kind of smelly. Actually, I'm very happy in the closet, so I decide to stay. Days and days go by, probably. I can hear my family saying, Where's Rascal? Hee hee, they'll never find me, I giggle. The footsteps again. Oh no, she's going to find me. The closet door opens. It's just boring old Luke. Rascal, what the heck are you doing in here? He asks me. Leave me alone, I scream. I am so angry that he ruined my hiding spot. Don't find me, don't find me, I shout. Don't find me. Then I kick and bang and throw some things. I cry so hard the room looks blurry and upside down. After I'm done crying, I feel all better. Can I borrow a dart? I ask Luke, drying my tears. You're nuts, he says and walks away, which I think means yes. I take the dart and run. In the hallway, I run into Mary. She is pointing and jumping up and down. Mrs. Gobblecracker went downstairs. She's in the living room. Where, what are you going to do? She yells. I'm gonna shoot her with this special sleeping dart. It will make her sleep for a hundred years. Too noisy. I need a break. Wow, says Mary, that's a good idea. Don't follow me, I warn her. There she is, just sitting there. I hold my dart ready to shoot it across the room. Ready? One, two, wait a minute. What did Violet just say? Just in case. I'm the mommy and you're the daddy, says Violet. Are they playing house? I stop my battle. I drop my dart. I want to play house. Now we just need a baby, says Violet. Baby? Did somebody say baby? My sister and brother look at me very carefully, trying to decide. I show them my cutest baby face. Goo, I say. I can be the baby. Goomoo ginga buku? Hmm, says Luke. Well, says Violet. Hmm, says Luke. I have a better idea, says Violet, grabbing Cherry. Cherry can be the baby. Great idea, says Luke. She's much quieter and cuter, says Violet. Stupid old baby cherry, I think. Using my scariest voice, I clench my teeth and warn her. Just wait! One day I'll get you! 
as I walk away, I hold my head up high and think, I don't have time to play anyway. I'm way too busy. But what was I so busy doing? I can't remember. Uh-oh. I know I was in the middle of something. When I get back to my room, I snuggle in bed with my bunny. Then Mary comes in with my dart. Banana peel. Oh yeah, I say. I was just about to shoot Mrs. Uh, shh. Did you hear that? Creaky sounds are coming from the stairs. Even the upstairs hallway monster is scared and wants to hide out in my room. We peek out and see Mrs. Gobblegracker looking angrier than before. It's time for me to be the brave one. Three, two, one, I whisper. And then I jump out and shoot my dart. Mrs. Gobblegracker stumbles around. She is walking into the wall. Her knees are bending. Her eyes are closing. She collapses. I'll find that girl when I wake up, she mumbles, and then she is sound asleep. Right in the butt. Where is that little girl? I have to tell Luke and Violet. They should know that I shot Mrs. Gobblecracker because I was so quick and tricky and I had such good aim. They should know that no baby could do what I did. They should know. Oh my. I run to the living room and jump right on Violet's lap. I cup my hands around her ear. I whisper my secret. Mrs. Gobblecracker is asleep in the upstairs hallway. I shot her with a sleeping dart. I'm dead serious. Mom! Rascal is bothering us, calls Violet, pushing me off her lap. What is she doing? calls my mother from the kitchen. She's spitting in my ear! No, I'm not. I'm telling you a secret. I shout, but before my mother comes into the room, I run away as fast as I can. As I'm dashing up the stairs, I hear my mom say, where did Rascal come up with this crazy Mrs. Gobblegracker game? I stop to listen. I have no idea, says Violet. How would we know, says Luke. Then I run down the hallway to my room, being careful not to trip on the body lying on the floor. All right, friends, taking a quick water break. Chapter three, Chicken Bone. As I step over Mrs. Gobblegracker's body on my way to, break, to breakfast, I start to worry. 100 years sounds like a very long time, but what if 100 years goes by really fast? I decide to wear my cow costume as a disguise, just in case Mrs. Gobblegracker wakes up just to be safe. Aren't you hot in that? asks Luke. No, yes, I don't want Mrs. Gobblegracker to recognize me. Stop talking about Mrs. Gobblegracker, screams Violet. Stop talking about Mrs. Gobblegracker, I copy her. Stop copying me! Stop copying me! While Mrs. Gobblegracker is asleep, I finally have time to hang out with Luke and Violet. I try to get Luke and Violet to laugh at me. Cereal time, I've discovered, is the best time for laughing. If I can get milk to come out of my nose, they always laugh. And if my parents sleep late, I can make them laugh by saying bathroom words. And then I, and then, and then the toilet broke. But after cereal time, I have to work much harder to get their attention. If you want, you can milk me, I offer Violet. Ew, says Violet. 
Okay, I'll milk myself and fill up a glass for you, I offer. Get away from me, screams Violet. I follow Luke and Violet around the house and think of ways to impress them. Mary follows me. Can I draw a mustache on Mrs. Gobblegracker while she is asleep? Asks Mary. No, that is way too risky, I tell her. But she's snoring really loud, says Mary. I'm busy, I say, waving her away. Hey guys, do you want to see a magic trick? See the stick in this hand, I say. Then I put my hands behind my back. Now it's in this hand. Ta-da! That's the worst trick I've ever seen, says Luke. I'm going to pull it out. Ready? One, two. They didn't even want to see me eat a napkin. Hey guys, do you know I can sing without opening my mouth? I'm dead serious. Listen! Want to see me eat a napkin? Left hand on red. Twister. The game twister. Can you please hum somewhere else? Says Luke. It's not humming, it's singing, I say. Wait a minute, is that sweat? Asks Violet, looking up. Are you covered in sweat? She asks. Take that thing off. Nope, I say and fold my arms. I will not. Why do you always have to act like such a baby? Asks Violet. Then my mom yells. Pink. Violet's painting Luke's toenail. Rascal, it's a hundred degrees. Take that costume off right this second. I am boiling mad. I was singing. You are interrupting. I collapse onto the kitchen floor. The tile feels cool on my hot face. My tears fall into the diamond patterns in the tile that I know so well from my temper tantrums on the kitchen floor. As I'm screaming and kicking and crying, I unbutton my cow costume and strip down to my underwear because it's way too hot to have this temper tantrum in a cow costume. Not because they told me to. When I'm all done, I put my bathing suit on and go outside. I find Mary asleep under a tree. Are you real sleeping or fake sleeping? I ask her. Real sleeping, she says without opening her eyes. Now even Mary doesn't want to play. I lie in the hammock all by myself and think maybe Luke and Violet are right. Maybe I am a baby. I think of all the babyish things I do. I still smell my bunny and suck my fingers to fall asleep. I still put my clothes on inside out. I still can't whistle. I still overflow everything I pour. I still want to wear my nightgown all day. When I look up at the trees through my tears, I see someone up there looking down at me. Who are you? I ask, rubbing my eyes, squinting into the sun. I'm your fairy godmother, says a little man, crawling down from the tree like a koala. Are you sure? I ask. You don't look like a fairy godmother. Well, I'm pretty sure, he says, but he looks kind of confused. He looks confused to me. Well, the important thing is I'm here to help you. He says his name is Mr. Nuggy and he, that he lives in the woods. Boy, do I need help, I say. Can you turn me into something else? I have too many problems as a human. Sure, he says. How about a pineapple? Um, okay, I say, shrugging. Why not? He takes out his wand. One, two, three, ta-da! I look down at my body. I don't feel like a pineapple, I say. 
Do I look like one? Mr. Nuggy looks at me very carefully. He sniffs me. He pokes me. Then sadly, he shakes his head no. I'm sorry. It's okay. But then I have an idea. How about a puppy? I say. Can you turn me into a puppy? Definitely, he says, jumping up excitedly. No problem at all. He's lucky that I'm already really good at turning into a puppy. One, two, three. He waves his wand. I drop to my hands and knees. Woof, woof, woof. I bark and wag my tail. Mr. Nuggy looks very pleased. I turn into a puppy just in time. Where did that little girl go? She was just out here. And where did this stupid dog come from? Mrs. Gobblecracker asked Mr. Nuggy. You must be imagining things, says Mr. Nuggy. There's no girl here. I know you're up to something, Nuggy, she says. Your silly little tricks have never worked on me. Watch out, says Mr. Nuggy. This dog bites. I bark my head off at Mrs. Gobblecracker. Somebody get this dog to shut up, says Mrs. Gobblecracker. She has absolutely no idea it's me. Ruff, ruff. Woof, woof, I say, which means my human days are over, and boy, do I mean it. Mr. Nuggy says, I have to go now. My wife needs me home for dinner. He starts to climb back up the same tree. Woof, woof, woof. I bark up the tree after him, which means, wait, what's your phone number? You can call me from my any banana, he calls down. No numbers. Then he disappears into the summer leaves. Violet and Luke come outside to play frisbee, and I run to tell them the news. I have great news. Mrs. Gobblecracker will never find me. Really? You decided to stop acting like a baby? Asks Violet. No, I decided to stop acting like a human, I say. Oh, brother, says Violet. Don't tell me. I don't want to know. No problem, I say, because I can't talk anyway. Woof, woof, woof. Woof, 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 I say, chasing after the frisbee. What the heck is this? Beat it, says Violet. But Luke says, come here, puppy. And he pets me. What's your name, puppy? I have to think of a very good name so that Luke will be excited to play with me. I concentrate really hard. Finally, I say my name without really opening my mouth since puppies don't talk. Chicken bone. Your name is Chicken Bone? I nod my head yes and say, woof, woof, woof. Luke looks pleased. Do you have an owner? He asks. I shake my head no and make my saddest puppy eyes ever. Well, he says, petting me, I could be your owner, but you have to be a good dog. Woof, woof, woof. I jump around and wag my tail and do somersaults to show how happy I am. It turns out Luke really wants to be a dog owner. I never knew. Ooh, great hammock. I have long shaggy white fur with brown spots and I have a pink polka dotted bow, a wet nose, and I'm very jumpy and I usually have spit on my face. Luke just can't get enough of me. He loves chicken bone. And that's how I became a dog named Chicken Bone and how Mrs. Gobblecracker was left hanging around my house looking kind of bored and confused. I guess she is waiting for me to come back. Chapter four, if you take a dog to the doctor. Luke puts my cereal bowl on the floor for me and I hungrily eat it up. 
He gives me treats, which is more cereal when I do my tricks. Here are my tricks. Lie down, spin, sit. Then I chase my dad down the sidewalk as he leaves for work. Go home, dog. Give me my leg back. Er. Woof, woof, I say and jump on Violet, who is still trying to get used to me. Stop licking me, she screams. Gross, help. Rascal is licking me again. Rascal, put your tongue back in your mouth, yells my mom. At breakfast, I pick up socks with my mouth and bring them to my owner. I make my little puppy begging sounds until he throws the sock for me to fetch. I gotta go. Be a good little dog today, my owner says. I lie on my back so he can pet my belly. Luke and Violet are going to their friend's house. If I weren't a dog, I'd be really jealous. Instead, I'm so happy that I get to stay home all day and chew on socks with Mary. But my mom surprises me with some terrible news. I have to get dressed. Put these on, says my mom, grabbing the socks from my mouth. Woof, woof, I say, which means no. Rascal, we have to go. I'm not kidding, she says. You have an appointment at the doctor today. You have to have a checkup before you go back to school. Woof, woof, I tell her and shake my head no. I don't want to get dressed because I don't want to go anywhere. I want to stay home in my nightgown, which is actually part of my fur. Now, yells my mom. Dogs don't get dressed. Woof! My mom says, we are in a huge rush. Let's go. But no matter how many times she says it, Dory, did you hear me say we are in a rush? We have an appointment. We can't be late. It just doesn't mean anything to me because I'm a dog. Woof, 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 I say, which means, no, thank you. I'm just going to stay home and chew on socks. That dog looks so familiar. We are already on the sidewalk by the time my mom finally gets my dress over my head. I cry and have a huge fit and people walk by and stare at us. Oh, that dog sure looks ridiculous in that dress. Yuck, I hate this stupid dress. Grrr. I had planned on changing back into a girl when we got to the doctor's office, but I discovered it became impossible to change out of being a dog. I was stuck as a dog and there was nothing I could do about it. These things just happened to me. The doctor is very smiley. She asks me a lot of questions. How old are you, Dory? Woof, woof, I say. What grade are you starting? Woof. Dory, you need to answer the doctor, says my mom, who looks embarrassed. I see you like to pretend you are a puppy. You are a very cute puppy, says the doctor. What else do you like to do? Woof, 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 I say. I'm so sorry, says my mom. Dory is very imaginative, a little too imaginative. Wonderful, says the doctor, and she pets me. I want to lick her. My mom whispers to me, put your tongue back in your mouth. The doctor listens to my heartbeat, looks inside my ears, takes my blood pressure and my temperature, and makes my knees jump. And I'm a good little puppy for all of it. Then the doctor says she needs to check my eyes. She asks me to look at the chart, cover one eye, and say what letter she is pointing to. I point to an E. Woof, I say. My mom whispers. 
sorry, if you don't say the letters, she's gonna think you can't see them and you are gonna have to get glasses. So you need to speak. I imagine myself wearing glasses and it's very cute. What letter is this? Asks the doctor pointing to an F. Woof, I say. My mom says, I'm so sorry. I know Dory can see just fine. Maybe we'll have to do this another day. Okay, says the doctor. No problem. There's just one more thing we need to do. And right when I least expect it, just as the doctor is saying what a very healthy little puppy I am, she is holding a needle. I try to get away, but I'm not fast enough. Ow! I scream and cry. One, least expect it. Two, what's this? Three, oh no! Four, ah! Five, lollipops? Then the doctor holds a basket of lollipops in front of me. You can choose one lollipop for now and one for later, says the doctor, smiling. My tears crawl right back into my eyes when I see that basket of lollipops. I choose one yellow lollipop for now, and just when the doctor least expects it, I poke the lollipop stick right in the doctor's thigh. Ouch, she says. That's a shot for you too, I say. So you can talk, she says, smiling. And then I make my angry puppy face and growl. Grrrr, I say, showing her my pointy teeth. When it's time to go home, my mom puts my yellow lollipop in her purse, and I know it's gone forever. I quickly put my shoes back on. My mom doesn't even have to ask me because I can tell by the way she is breathing that I should just do it. On the way home, we pick up Luke and Violet at their friend's house. I quickly whimper like a dog to Luke so my mom can't hear. I raise my paws and make my eyes look droopy. But my mom hears everything. Dory, that's it. I'm done. No more dog today, she snaps at me from the front seat. I pout. And for a few minutes, it's quiet in the car. And then I whisper. Who wants to hear how loud I can hum? All right, friends, we will pick up on chapter five in the next video. Thank you for listening today. And if you haven't, please subscribe, please share these videos, please like the videos. And if you want, send me an email at rosreads1 at gmail.com to let me know how I'm doing where you're from, what your favorite book is. Roz Reads. Thank you. Bye.